we continue our study about evil in the Bible. And today we're going to finish up on the topic of good versus evil. Now, we're not going to finish evil work. we got much more to do about evil. I mean, next uh, topic or content will be the heart and evil. we got innocence or innocence. we got the judgment of God as an evil. Knowledge, misery, pain, and suffering. Protection, rebellion, religion, repentance, sexual, sin, sowing and reaping, spirit. Stealing or theft, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, unwell, a verb, and warning. And we've already done the adjective, we've done the introduction, the bad deeds, we've done the criminal and capital punishment, good is evil and evil is good, and we're finishing today good versus evil. As I've said before, you've got to get all, all the videos. Check out our new website and design. I hopefully it's easier to work and handle. As you open your Bibles of Romans chapter 12 and finish up evil as far as evil versus good or good versus evil. Now, not to confuse good is evil and evil is good. We've already done that. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 21, we read in the Bible, Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So, if you have been done wrong, and I know some of them used to say, you know, vengeance is mine, and they forget to say, thus saith the Lord. If somebody has done you evil and done you no good, our response is not to retaliate with, with evil it's, again, it's we're to do good. So, it's a warning from the Bible. It's a warning by Paul to Christians. That evil can or is able to be overcome one. And a Christian's life under the threat of being in evil. The Bible says to resist it by the reverse of the evil with good. And I know that's a lot of words. It's overpowering the power of evil with the overpowering of the of the power of good. He says, be not overcome with evil. You can saturate your life as a Christian in evil. The church did me wrong. The pastor did me wrong. That family did me wrong. The world done me wrong. Well, get up there and do right. Do good. Don't use evil as an excuse in your life. Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. But strong meat. Um, let's go to verse 11. Hebrews 5, 11. We'll read the chapter. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to utter, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when ye, for, when, for, wow, untie my tongue. For when for the time ye ought to be teaching, you have need to one teach you again, which by the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, talking about the word in the teaching, not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, the word, for he is a babe. 
but strong meat belonging to them that are full age, even those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So with Romans chapter 12, 21, all right, I acknowledge that evil has happened to me. Now I gotta know what the good is to, to return good for the evil. And a newborn Christian who's been newly saved is liking to milk. It's like feeding an infant child as you grow as a Christian. And as you take a baby and you feed them, you're not going to put a newborn baby in a high chair and give them uh, a fast food hamburger and french fries. That comes in time. He needs mother's milk. And then from mother's milk, you, you get stuff that it, it's not consistency of solid food, but it, it's and mash, mush. And then you go from mash, mush, a little bit more solider, but it's not solid. And then you go from there and, and you move that child slowly through liquefied food to mush, and you get mush to unmush, and to finally you give the child. You remember, I remember giving my children those little cookies, and those cookies would, would you know, they would put them in their mouth and they would dissolve in their mouth, easy, easy to eat, easy to chew. And that's the next step, further step of growth that, hey, the child's moving on and then they've got their teeth and they learn how to start biting and chewing. And that's my phone. And you work the child, you work the, the Christian to a proper diet of what his mouth, whether he's got teeth or he don't have teeth. And growth. I, I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's just friend's phone. And according to Hebrews 5.14, as you grow as a Christian, you've got to discern by good and evil. And the only way you're going to discern that is by reading and studying the Bible. Now, a newborn babe in Christ we try to get them in the Gospel of John first, and then I try to get them into uh, First Thessalonians. I mean, a newborn babe in Christ is not ready for the Book of Revelation. I myself, as a newborn babe in Christ, I read the Book of Revelation, and honestly, I I, I went through that. And I'm coming to the end. Of, I, I this is listen. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. You can ask God. When I came to the book of Revelation, I was praying to the devil to get saved. I had no knowledge. I mean, devil, don't you don't you read Revelation? Don't you know your end? And, but, and the trouble with many Christians is they go for the steak. And they ask for the steak sauce. And they want to go into a church that is a steakhouse. They're not ready for steak. They're not ready to pull themselves up to a table and grab a fork and knife. Well, I mean, there's been times, it, it don't bother me, it's nature. There's been times I've been in a, in a restaurant and I've seen a newborn babe thereabouts, and I've seen a mother have that child up to her breast at a restaurant. <laughs> that child ain't ready for that. That child's got the food provided by God through the mother. And newborn babes in Christ need to be grown. They need to be helped. Listen, when, when you get somebody saved, I'm going to tell you, Joseph Caswell witnessed to me April 25th, 1987. And I got saved in my grandma's living room. Joseph Caswell opened the Bible, 
Show me how to get saved. And I got saved. My name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that was the last time he ever dealt with me. He never showed the Bible more to me. He never helped me to grow. That was it. That ought not to be so. Christians today, they want to birth children. They want to birth children. They want to birth children. But they don't want to father children. That's the problem with the generation today. we got a bunch of children. Yeah, they've been born, but the fathers are gone. Yeah, it, it, we go out and preach the gospel, but we also got to grow. So the word of God intake by a Christian and the age of his maturity. The first thing a Christian should know is that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. He's not ready for Israel is the only nation of God. He's not ready for, well, there are seven dispensations. And he may have to be growing, you know, maybe a growth of the virgin birth, go a little bit, maybe a little bit, and explain the virgin birth. And he needs to be taught, you know, Christmas. Well, the Bible says that the wise men, there wasn't three, and they didn't show up the same time the shepherds showed up. And that Joseph is not the father of Jesus Christ. He was the adopted father of Jesus Christ. A diet of every Christian should be the Bible. Oh, I'm going to go get a book on prayer. That's not the Bible. We must have a diet from the Word of God. If you want ketchup, steak sauce, mustard, relish, lettuce, tomato. All right. But let's get the Word of God for what it is. All right. The milk, the Bible calls the, itself. The word of God, the milk, the milk of the words. You don't need to add chocolate sauce to make chocolate milk. The word of God should be always just milk. It don't need the chocolate. <coughs> a newborn or a fresh born again Christian begin their life all over it's a new life newborn and their first taste of their bible reading is likened to mother's milk and from the tent they grow into more and the most solid food called doctrine again a steak at a, at a table is you know the, the seven years and three and a half years and the the, the six 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 Newborn babes growing don't need to know about six six. Well, oh, they're concerned. All right, let me tell you. Take the Christian. Six 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 is not for the Christian. Before the six 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 in the mark ever shows up, the Christians will be taken out of the world, and they won't be here for the tribulation period. You don't need to worry about the six six six. And when they grow to learn about the rapture, and that will come in within time. And they go from the from the rapture to realize that after the rapture there's tribulation. And then you can show them that in the tribulation is the mark. But they're not ready for that. A newborn babe should be brought in Christ. The Bible says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Do you realize now that you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, which you have done, you, you will die. That's not going to stop your death. The wages of sin is, is death is written to Christians. <clears throat> me. But you're going to die. But do you realize that now when you're going to die, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Let me tell you what that means. That means that moment when you close your eyes and you... you your family says goodbye to you, you will open your eyes to Jesus. Another growth in food from the from the, 
the breast, the breast milk would be, hey, do you know the day you got saved that the angels rejoiced in heaven? Let me take it. Is it Luke? I think fifteen or six. I know it's in Luke fifteen or sixteen. There are things they're not ready. And you know the Bible and another newborn babe fact would be all right now that you receive Christ as your Savior, the Bible says you must be baptized. You must be submerged underwater in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by the pastor of your church. And then you need to explain to them the Lord's Supper. And then you gotta wean them off the world and religion. We don't do that no more. Well you we don't do that here. You will not have to take the mask no more. You will not have to go around and try to sell or peddle magazines anymore. And you bring them out of the world and you bring them out of religion or science and you bring them slowly to birth of the Bible. Okay, evolution. Well, let's look at Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And show that God created it all. Man came from dirt. Just doctors as you grow by. Don't get into the gap theory. Well, you know, between no, they're not ready for that. So the word of God is the milk. The word of God is called strong meat. The word of God is to be our diet. And as we grow, we learn what is good. And we listen, I've been saved since 1987. I think that's 33 years. You know, I am recently realizing that things I've done were sin. And I'm confessing. And I'm learning more today than I did yesterday. It's a never I get to the point. As a Christian, you'll never get to the point. All right, here's your diploma. You learned it all. You don't need any more school. School never ends. You're going to be always, unless you drop out and say, I don't want to have it no more. That's a sorry state. And as your growth in certain foods would be doctrine. The virgin birth is doctrine. How to go out and tell other people about Jesus. Listen, I was saved April 25th, 1987. I knew nothing. I knew, you know what? I'm not going to hell. I didn't want to go to hell, but I'm not going to hell. I believed on Jesus. If you were to ask me what Joseph Caswell showed me from the Bible, I couldn't tell you. I don't remember. I remember getting down on my knees. I remember weeping for God. I remember asking for God to save my soul. April 26, 1987, the next day I went to church and raised my hand and stood up and told the congregation I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. That afternoon when church was over, I went over to my dad at his house and I told my dad, I said, Dad, you're not, don't go to hell. And my dad said, don't tell me to go to hell. I said, no, 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 Dad. I have not been versed in the Bible. I've already began to witness. And I, well, what was the next meet for me to grow on April 27th, 1987? I went back to church Sunday night. And I heard the Bible preach and taught. And then I went, the, I went Wednesday night, I went midweek service. And I talked to the pastor and he said, you need to be baptized. I was baptized the next Sunday. See, this is growing. And then I need to go knocking on doors and tell people about Jesus. When? And I went. I was given a Bible. Or I got a Bible. And I began foolishly the book of Revelation. I was not ready for the book of Revelation. See, I'm the kind of person, why did you go to the book of Revelation? I'm the kind of person, I would read the last 10 pages of the book first. 
And if it was good, I go back and read the rest of the book. If it was terrible, I chuck the book in the garbage. I'm weird. Always been weird. Like I said, I get them in the Gospel of John. I get them in uh, Thessalonians. And I get them in uh, uh, Second John and Third John. And then you got to look at that. I mean, how is he? You can't teach and you cannot deal with a Christian like a robot factory. All right. Now, you know, you got to say, well, he done pretty well. I think you're I think you're ready for rebel. I think it rebelly. I think you're ready for Genesis. Or. Every baby's different. And you tell them, okay, now you start in Genesis one. You're going to go to all the way to Revelation 22. It's a complete book. And it's going to get boring. And it's going to get, I don't want to finish. And it's going to get ridiculous. And you're going to get mad. And you're going to get confused. Read every chapter. Read three or four chapters of every day to get your butt all the way through the year. And when you're done with Revelation, go back to Genesis 1 and reread it. Again, I, this Bible is marked. I, I've read it every year since the year 2000. I've read the Bible more than once throughout the year. I've read it before the year 2000. Partially and completely all the way through. And I'm still learning things. And I've still got places where I have a question mark. A growing Christian learn. Now listen, if that Christian at any point in his time, I'm not going to read the Bible no more. I, I, I'm done. I'm not going to listen to the Bible. Or I'm going to get a modern Bible. He's put the bib down. He's put the, the, the silverware down. He's put the plate off to the side of the table. And he's I'm ready for the check. I'm ready for the check. I had a guy, well, that's what men taught me. And I'm ready for the check. What the Bible? As long as you are in the Bible desiring, hungering, and thirsting for God and the Holy Spirit to work in your life, you're going to grow. Listen, I know Christians of great age that have said toward the end of the year, there's two things I've learned. Never amazed at what, you, what you'll learn in the Bible. A growing Christian learns through his study. Now, me, Lester Roloff, Bob Jones, Peter S. Ruckman, James Knox. I'm trying to think of all the people I've listened to. And then there's been evangelists and missionaries. But it's not them that that is growing in my life. It is me reading. I can get all the sermon tape. I can get all the stuff about evil from Stiley Hayward. But if you are not presently studying and reading your Bible yourself. I've been fed and I'm being fed now. God is feeding me presently. My grandma had really disgusting habits. Every time we went out to eat, she ordered something with this. She get, oh, I'm fed. you want any of this? You want the rest of my hamburger? You want the rest of my french fries? Okay. But when you're relying on your favorite preacher, teacher, evangelist, whoever, radio, TV, you're sitting there at the table and they're eating food and you're just staring at them like, and within time, many times, you're going to die at that table. You're going to have death at that table with that man 
eating his meal and being fed because you're not eating. You personally have got to get in your, you have to have your own King James Bible. You have to set forth, and there's many out there, reading schedule. I read from Genesis to Revelation. Now, there are reading schedules. You read Old Testament in the morning, and you read New Testament at night. You read New Testament in the morning. You read Old Testament at night. That's great. Which one? The one you were comfortable with. If you want to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that's great. You want to read the Old Testament in the morning, New Testament at night, that's great. You want to read the New Testament at morning and the Old Testament at night, that's great. Which one? Which one works for you? What works for me may not work for you, but let's get one basic thing down. Whether you do Old Testament in the morning, New Testament at night, New Testament in the morning, Old Testament at night, you read all the way through, when it comes to the end of the year, have you read your Bible? That's the point. Well, doctor, no, not doctor. Well, preacher, no, you. You, have you read your Bible? And I would suggest to you, find pens and markers that don't bleed. And they listen, I'll, I told my pastor last night, we're laughing. The biggest lie that the devil will tell you when it comes to Bible, here's the biggest lie. When you buy a pen, and I feel so bad, I told pastor about these pens, and I said they don't bleed. It says it don't bleed. And I, I assume through his Bible and through my Bible, they have bled. And I apologize to the Lord and to him for that. Get yourself a pencil. Get yourself colored pencils. Get yourself, uh, uh, where is it? I got it here. These, no, these are great. These are the Micron pen. Micron pen. Pretty much find them in any Bible bookstore. Bible Baptist Church in Pensacola has them. All different colors and sizes. Mark your word if you don't know what a passage and, and listen that passage spoke to there what on earth what's that talk about take your pen take your marker and put a question mark i got them in my bible sometimes god has answered it sometimes it's been roundabout answers i'm still in there i don't know what it means but that tells god you're learning and you, and you, you go underline, and you know what? And you write notes to it. I got, here's some. Um, let's see if I can find a clear one in the page we're at. Uh, Hebrews six seven. For the earth which drinketh in rain that that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth the blessings of God. I wrote right there next to that verse. I wrote good. Verse eight. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burnt, I wrote right next to that, evil. I write a verse that, hey, that's talking about Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. -S. A newborn babe ain't ready to, to go before the church and give a Sunday school lesson. They're not ready for that. As a Christian ages, he learns more and more what offends God and not them. I, I had another time when I'm growing as a Christian. I thought chick tracks were Christian comic books that we were to collect. I mean, they had numbers. I was trying to collect all the Christian uh, chick tracks, but I didn't realize that you could buy them off the catalog and you could you could buy every single one of them from the catalog or online and i had i don't know who it was i had a brother come up to me or maybe a sister in the lord and to make this long story short is i was supposed to give them out to people went back and forth back i want to make it short. 
And at that point, that that brother or sister in the Lord taught me how to pass out gospel tracts. And I've been passing out gospel tracts, and I've got many gospel tracts out. That was growth. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, when you when you give something to a baby, they find a sneaker. Who's ever a sneaker? They grab that sneaker and it goes in their mouth. They're like, no, let me see that. And you put it on their on their feet. That's helping someone to grow. That don't go in the mouth. No, that don't go on your head. No, you don't want to touch that. No, you don't want to touch it. No, that's your toy. Yes, you can put I hope you have fun with that. When you start realizing what offends God and what not offends you, that's the problem in the world today. Too many people are getting offended and not realizing what offends God. Lying offends God. And when you now grow, you know what? Uh, the Bible says, thou shalt not bear false. You know, I need to stop lying. I gotta stop that. That's not help. That's not gonna help me as a Christian. That does not please. I've, I'm gonna set forth in my life, I'm gonna try to stop lying. You're growing. And then when you go about and, and, and you know, you don't lie. You're kneeling. You're crawling on the floor. And you, you, you stand up on the furniture and then you tell your boss a lie. Oh, you're falling down. And you let mom or dad come along, pick you back up, and address the boo-boo, and you start crawling again. And you're not going to stop sinning. You're going to sin even as a Christian to the day you die. And then you, you're growing, and you realize what offends God, and that the state of sins and sinning as he grows from breast milk to the word to get himself to meat. In the ages, he learns to discern what is good and what is evil. All right? My child, the child is off breast milk. We go to the store, we get the jar food. Oh, he loves green beans. Oh, I love Job. Wow, that, it's a terrible book, but I love it. And he gets something that is uh, terrible. Spinach. Oh, that's horrible. What's spinach in your lifestyle? Like? Numbers chapter 7. Ugh, I cannot get through reading Numbers chapter 7. I'll be reading Numbers chapter 7. Okay, I got I to gotta make this. I got to go to the store today. I've got this to study. No, I haven't done this yet. Maybe I should take... Oh, wait a minute. I got to go back. I got to go reread what I didn't read to read, to read, to say, hey, I finished the Bible. Really? Did you go through Chronicles? Now, I enjoy Chronicles. Many people don't. And many people, Chronicles would be zucchini. Yeah, if you don't like zucchini. Some people, Chronicles would be like a vegetarian. Oh, I don't eat meat. <laughs> you need to. You need protein. You need man. To, uh, I'm gonna, I need, don't want to mess up that verse. Oh, is it Luke chapter 4? I know if I try to quote, I'm going to mess it up. Uh, Luke chapter 4. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You need every word of God. And as you're growing, as you're in the word and you're reading the word, you're going to come across, you're going to say, hey, I like that verse. You know what? I hear a brother or a sister over here. I hear them quoting scripture. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to start. I'm going to try to learn that verse. You're growing. And as a baby that learns how to, how to do food. That goes in my hand. 
Oh, okay. This is the end of the sippy cup I drink. Oh, and when I pull it up, hey, I get refreshing drink. You're growing. When, when I take my oatmeal cereal and dump it on my head or dump it on the floor, mom don't like that. Mom and dad are not very pleased when I wake them up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I get a spanking when I touch that because they don't want me to touch that. Now that I can have. That's mine. That's daddy. Now see, you're learning. That cup is mine. If I drink it right, I'm going to get... I, I, it's cold. I can drink it. You're growing. It takes time and study to learn that a Christian, that a Christmas tree is wrong. Do not, as an aged Christian, go up to another Christian, especially a newborn, that Christmas tree is wrong. Say, Stolly, you do it. No, I do studies about it. I know, listen, I know a pastor, we, we are in his house. And he had a Christmas, and he went, I, I know that offends you. I said, no, it don't offend me. It's pretty. It's a pretty bale bush. I would not do that to a new Christian. I would not do that to a worldly Christian. Now, if a Christian wants to learn, they come to a point in their life that they're growing, I would say, okay, um, hey, listen, you got the Bible. You're reading the Bible. You're learning things. I notice you celebrate Christmas. They're, they better be ready. It's like giving a young child peanuts or a hot dog. They can choke on it. You don't want them to choke. And the, their particular religion is not biblical. One must look and dress like correctly. From being held, sitting up, kneeling, standing, walking, and then running. The older and more study of the Bible, and they ought to be studying and reading the Bible, the more the ability to know good and wrong or evil. They've got to be willing. Now, there is a natural, I feel sorry, there, there's a natural disease of retardedness. The child has developed naturally in the things that are wrong, and whatever it be. All right, I'm not picking on that. I'm not picking on a child that has ADHD or whatever that is. I'm not picking on a child that their senses, you know, just didn't, didn't develop. I'm picking on a Christian who is saved and has told God and others. I'm not reading. I am going to live in the world, and I don't care what you tell me to do. I am That's spiritually retarded. I'm not going to learn my memory verses. I am not going to witness to people. I am not giving up my sin. That is a spiritual retardness. There will be no growth. That's by choice. God never adopts a child that is retarded, that can never grow. Every child of God is given the ability through the Holy Spirit to go to the full potential of life and serving God and to hear well done. If that is not so, if there's a man or woman saved that ends up at the judgment seat of Christ and walks away with no gold, no silver, no crowns, no precious stones, no rewards, no inheritance, is because that person has decided on their own to be a spiritual retard, and they didn't want to grow, and they did not want to do right. They were offended. They are at fault. And that's wrong. Why are there Christians who lavish and mock in sin? 
Their churches outright expose them to outright sins that God has said is an abomination. Yes, there are churches out there that are worldly and ungodly in the name of Jesus Christ and Christians. 2 Corinthians 11 tells us that Satan has his ministry. The outright problem with many Christians is maybe not their fault, is they are in a Christian, Baptist, whatever denomination church, and it is of the devil. Why are they still in that church? Because they are retarded and not reading and studying their Bible. My grandpa was, was a Catholic. Went to Catholic church, he got saved. And my family was quite concerned about him still going saved. He got saved, received Jesus Christ as a Savior, and he's still going to the Catholic Church. And the pastor came over and talked to him. And the pastor held my, bio, my, my grandpa's Bible. And he said, I'm not going to mention my grandpa's names. But he says, what does this, he says, you've read this Bible many years. Even read this Bible before he was. I mean, we believe he was saved before he actually got saved. And he said, what's the Bible say about the Catholic Church? He said, nothing good. Then so why are you in it? And my grandpa needed that little great awakening. Like the Christmas tree. It's wrong. And you need that great awakening at the great time of your growth to say, oh, okay. You need guidance and help from another Christian. And you're not going to get help and guidance from a worldly, ungodly congregation, church, whatever you're in. They are spiritually dead, lost. Could even be lost. Or they are just spiritually retarded. They have stopped feeding on the Word of God. And they have stopped their studying. Retarded. When a Christian has said, I am not reading my Bible no, no longer, you're retarded. You're retarding your growth because you're not going to grow by a Christian bookshelf. You're not going to grow by a Christian bookstore. You're not going to grow by getting the, uh, the preachers or the evangelist cassette tape or CDs, or download, wherever they are today. That's not going to help you grow. That's going to be an aid. All right, what is your preacher's take? What is your preacher's outline? What is the evangelist CDs? What is the, the book? That is ketchup, mustard, relish, steak sauce, honey, barbecue sauce, whatever you use, but that is not the meal. You take french fries. I can enjoy french fries without the ketchup. <clears throat> I can enjoy french fries with ketchup. I can enjoy french fries where I put a pile of ketchup on a plate and put salt in that ketchup. The french fries is the word of God. All right, what's the ketchup? That's my preacher. Go up to my preacher and say, uh, uh, Preacher, Pastor Jordan, your congregation member style, he says, you're ketchup. Yes, he is. He's ketchup. I'll take the french fries of the Word of God. I'll put them in there. And I get a nice little glove of ketchup on that french fry. Mm, that's good. It makes me, oh, it brings out what's the french fry. It brings out what we're doing in the book of Hebrews right now. Hebrews is French fries. Hebrews is McDonald's French fries. Not Burger King French fries. It is, to me, McDonald's French fries. And preacher comes along with his ketchup. Oh, wow. I am also doing, on top of the study, I am doing Dr. Peter S. Ruckman's Hebrew. That's the salt. I put the salt in the ketchup, mixed 
Peter has brought me in my preacher, uh, uh, Pastor Timothy. I put it together, and then I read Hebrews, and I take Hebrews, and I put it into the ketchup, and I put it in the salt. And then I, I devour it, and I learn more. And I read the Bible through, and I study the Bible through. It's not just, hey, I read the Bible, I finished it throughout the year. What did you learn? I didn't learn nothing. I just read it. All right, that's good for the newborn babe. Read the Bible and say, hey, I read it. Wow. All right. Now read it again and put some, put some learning to it. Look at that, 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 the special fork they give little children in, in a high chair. Yeah, it's not a real fork, but you know, look at the fork and say, you know, ooh, if I poke it in my eye, it hurts. Ow, I don't do that. I don't guess I don't do that. If I throw it at the floor at that dog, I don't have it no more. <laughs> and I look at the dog. The dog can't. All right, so I don't poke myself in the eye. I don't throw it down to that big furry thing down there. If I throw it at mom, she's not going to be happy. And if I take that thing and put it in my drink, I don't get nothing. I mean, I can put it in the drink and put it in my mouth, but I don't get the fullness of it. Oh, wow, now they give me this thing. It's got no, it's round, and well, I can pick up, I can pick up a drink with that. But this, these noodle things, they, they don't work. And you got, you learn. And then one day you'll be capable where mom or dad will put a knife in your hand and they will watch you as you start to learn, oh, wow, I can use a Sharpie thing. And if I'm going to take the Sharpie thing and start, oh, no, don't do that. What? What? You don't do that. Oh, okay. I don't know why, but they don't want me to take this. They don't want me to do that with the, with the Sharpie thing. And then one day you grow up and you say, oh, they give me this corn on the cob. I can use my hands? Man, they've been yelling at me for you. I try to I try to pick up my soup with my hands. They yell at me. I, I try to take my mashed potatoes. My, but this stuff here, I can, but okay, let me watch how they do it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And take the word of God, the book of Job, as a corn. And take a, a preacher, evangelist, and butter. And take Dr. Peter S. Ruckman for me to saw. And you have a meal. But I'm not going to take my pastor who is ketchup. And I'm not going to take this, this preacher who is salt. I'm not going to put the ketchup and salt together on my plate and make that to be the meal. That don't look right. If I'm sitting down with a group of people at a table and somewhere, and I'm just eating ketchup and salt, that guy's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, they stop feeding on the Word of God and stop studying. So, as they have been made retarded by their own self-doing, they are incapable of discerning good and evil. Why does this church have rock music when rock music is wrong? They're not reading the Bible. Why is it when I preach the gospel on the, on the street, people go, well, I'm good. You're not reading the Bible. That's not what Jesus would do. You are definitely not reading and studying your Bible. And they, what we're looking at with Hebrews, hope I'm on the same page, they have not exercised themselves to discern good and evil, and they're actually calling evil good and good and evil. And yes, that happens in the worldwide pulpits of churches and education and religion. There are people who in a podium, in a classroom will teach you it is right that we came from evolution because they have not read and studied their Bible. They believe sin is okay because they are dead to God. And they studied no more into what God has said. 
When the prodigal son left his father's house, his father had no more control over him. It was into the prodigal son that came home that the father could say, that was wrong, that's right, that's wrong, that's not yours, that's not how you do it. There's one other reason, and it's a dangerous one. They are growing in and studying in the word. They are taking bites without being able to handle the word at their age. Thus, they will choke themselves and spiritually die and be unable to return unto the diet of God. Well, you know, I've been saved for a year. I'm going to leave. And I'm going to put myself into the study of the mark of the beast. I am not going to take any needles from nobody because it's the mark of the beast. And I'm going to start a ministry, and I'm going to start telling everybody, don't take the mark of the beast. You choked yourself. You killed yourself. Because darkly and proper application of the word of God for the Christian in the church age, we don't need to worry about the mark. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We read our Bible. We're going to build the ark. And we're going to come across an amusement park to the Ark of Noah. Nowhere does it tell a Christian to go and build an ark. It tells us go out and preach the gospel. Does it tell you to study the scripture? Does it tell you the Christian to go build an ark? Yes or no? We're going to go build a mega church. We're going to have tens of billions of people. I'm going to have an airplane. I'm going to have a, a, a big fancy car. We're going to have big radio and big television. We're going to have all kinds of things. You took too much of a bite and you choked yourself. We are commanded as Christians not to suffice on milk alone but to search out the meal of the doctrine of the Word of God. I remember a, a couple years ago, it was done on a national magazine. There was a mother, and I, I don't know, I forget how old the child was. The child was able to dress himself. He was able to walk. He was able to feed himself. I mean, he was, a, I, I would think he was maybe before school age or maybe even school age. Uh, that, that, that frame of time. And the mother was still breastfeeding him. You need to get off the breast. <laughs> Solomon write about your wife, let her breast satisfy thee at all times. That's not your mother's breast. There's a time that you got to get off mother's milk, and you got to get to the baby food, you got to get to the rice cereal, you got to get to the mushy food, and you got to get to the soup, you got to get to the surfing cup, you got to get to the class, you can get to, you know, I can have chicken, and I can have pork, and I can have meat, and I can have meats and potatoes, and You cannot survive as a Christian if you're going to be, oh, the virgin mark. Oh, I'm going to stay on Christmas. You've got to grow. I used to read my Bible. At five or ten years old, Oh, yeah, again, I just said that. So about five or ten year old, that child was. We older Christians must bear much patience with the younger Christian growth. I said I had a man, I would privately go up to him and say, you know, what you said was incorrect. I did not humiliate him. I don't humiliate you in public 
fibers. I've done it for all. I got one man I'm teaching right now, and he's growing. He's learning. He's aging. He has not got offended, and he adheres to it. I've got people who've fallen away. Oh, you offended me. You got upset. You're mean, rude, and cruel. No. I got one man right now. Yeah. I, I, when I left Connecticut, I, I, the Lord showed me a church to put him in. I took care of him. I grew him. He helped me to try to get a church going, and he helped grow. And he didn't get offended. And when it came across that we, we tried to deal with it about going to the casino, and, well, he didn't get offended, but he wasn't going to do that. He was going to keep going to the casino no matter what. But he grew another aspect. Okay. And I'll tell you, the Lord got it to where he couldn't go to the casino no more. We showed you. This is a fort. This is a smooth. This is what you do with a fork. This is what you do with a spoon. All right. You want to try to drink your Kool-Aid with your fork? Good luck, kid. It's not going to work. You know? Uh, the age. They are not. They are not as an age that need to be fed appropriately. So they cannot choke and gag and learn to handle chunky and chunkier food. There's sometimes that mom or dad or auntie or grandma is going to come over. They're going to chop up your food for you. I remember as I, I remember as a kid, we go out to eat and I would push my plate to my mom and she chop it all up for me. And I remember one time I pushed my plate. On, over my mom, my mom gave me a look like, you got to be kidding. You know how to chop it up. Oh, I was just being lazy. And mom did not let me to be lazy. Mom pushed that plate over and said, you do it. You know how to do it. I've taught you. I've seen you do it. And we can't be lazy to the growing Christians. We show them how to do it. We, we teach them how to do it. And we know they can do it and they push the plate on. Oh, no, 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 no. I remember a pastor did that to me. We went knocking on doors. We went on many doors knocking on doors. We went to the door and the pastor pushed the doorbell. He says, you're doing this one. He says, you've seen enough. That's how I got to be where I am today. Preaching on the streets and dealing with Jehovah Witnesses and dealing with people who, who have problems and dealing with people who want to grow in the Bible and able to have a public Bible study and able to teach my family the Bible. I was taught how to do it. I was shown how to do it and I've done it. There will be people who will decide, no, I ain't going to do it. And then there are going to be people out there who are going to be, do it for me. You can't be 16 years old and call your mama into your room and say, Mama, dress me. That don't work. As infants grow into toddlers, then to children, so we must have the same patience with other Christians. The man I, I talk about, he, he does well with, with Jehovah Witness. I've got Christian friends, and they would say, hey, let me deal with that. No, just watch me do it. Watch me do it, and here's some memory verses to, to memorize. Here's some things, and then one day, I'll help you. I mean, when, when your son comes up to you, and he's six years old, and he's got your razor, your razor shaving for your beard or your chin. And he says, Dad, can I want to use your razor? No, not now. You'll cut yourself, you'll kill yourself. 
And then when when my son was ready to uh, the, the, the shave for the first time, I went out to the store with him. 